Welcome to the DD Post Sports Chat. I'm Drew Rubenstein here with Kristen Kerlick, and it's uh, playoff football. First week of the uh, the playoffs here, and and got three area teams uh, in the field. First, we'll start off with the single A bracket. Clay Vitell comes in at, at eight and one, where they had the one forfeit that they didn't count on there. But still, despite only losing one game, it seems like they have a pretty tough draw here. They do. Um, Clay Vitell just missed being able to host a home playoff game. Kind of a bummer for them with that new field. But um, they came in seated at number nine. And they get number eight, Wahama, on Saturday night at 7:30. Um, that's that's a pretty tough draw. Wahama is the defending state champ. Champion, um, knocked off Madonna in the in the final last year, and um, Wahama is nine and one at this point, and um, they are they're going to be some tough competition. Uh, you, you were mentioning a little bit about about their game. How, how does Clay Vitell match up against that with what uh, Wahama's strength on on the run game? Wahama is a run team. Um, they're going to run the wing T uh, most likely, and they have several. They have a real fast running back. Um, their quarterback can run. They've got a nice fullback as well. Um, you know, they're they're not going to disguise what they do. Um, they put up a lot of points. They've only been held under 50 three times this year. Um, so you know that that's the question: How will yeah. Clay Vitell match up to uh, someone with that sort of a high-powered offense? Going into the AAA bracket, the the game of the week probably for for the entire playoffs is Morgantown University, at least in my mind. Uh, second time in three weeks that these two teams are playing. Um, does that favor one team over the, another? That they are playing so quickly, they're, they're playing each other, uh, you know, so quickly in back-to-back -back games. You know, your guess is as good as mine and as good as anybody else's at this point. I guess the history of it, if you look back, you know, when they've had to rematch in mm -hmm. the past years, has favored the team that lost the first game. Um, or if the team that did win the first game won, it was, the, you know, they had a much tougher time. I think in 2007, University, mm -hmm. you know, blew out Morgantown in, in the regular season and, you know, barely won the playoff game. So I guess... You know, if, if you look at it historically, that's, that's how it would go, but, you know, it, it's tough to say. <laughs> they both had a bye week after the Hawks beat MHS 14-3 to in the regular season matchup, so uh, they, they, you know, they've been able to rest their players and things like that, but do you think either team will unveil new wrinkles, or are, are they are what they are at this point? Uh, I think that for Morgantown, they are what they are, and they, al they always have been, they always will be. They're going to run first. They're going to play physical, tough football. Um, they are not letting anyone know the status of Chazzy Thomas and Ethan Goldcamp um, going into the game, which, you know, that probably is, is smart on their port. Um, so, but whether or not Chazzy is back or fully healthy or what his status is, they're going to do the same thing. It will just be with different people. University, on the other hand, um, it's going to be typical of what they've looked like this year, however. What was interesting about the first matchup was there were only 52 plays run, so really neither team showed a whole lot. And University, uh, Coach John Kelly said, you know, we, we, ha we do have some more things to show. We have some more options that we just didn't get to in a, a shortened game. So you could see something a little different, a little more interesting mm -hmm. from University this time around. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see how it plays out because I think UHS like that uh, grinded type of a game and if it gets into a high scoring type of a game you would think that would favor the Mohegans. But either either way, I guess just kind of looking at the, the bigger picture of the, of the bracket, um, when you look at the two sides, it seems like one side's kind of uh, more, a lot more stacked than the other. It does. Um, if you if you look at the bracket on paper, that top bracket, it does have the top seeded Huntington in it, who is undefeated. Um, no, no doubt, a good team. You, you know, Wheeling Park's up there, a good team. South Charleston, even at the number 12, is going to be a tough matchup for Wheeling Park in that first round. Um, however, you look at the bottom bracket, and you've got Morgantown and University. You've got Martinsburg, the three-time defending state champ. You've got Cabell Midland, who knocked off Morgantown in the semis last year, and went to the you know went to the title game um you know so it's and you've got capital who's the number three seed and and they're a tough football team and you know it, it definitely looks like that bottom bracket whoever comes out of that is going to be playoff tested for sure john bowers you know he, he didn't really want to talk too much about the bracket in general coach john kelly was a little more forthcoming and you know said hey you know, I, I wouldn't. I, I I would pretty much put my money on whoever comes out of this bottom bracket is is going to be your state champion. Do you think Morgantown University, whoever comes out of Saturday night's game, do they have the toughest road to Wheeling? I 
I would say, yeah. I, I would say probably so. They have to, um, whoever comes out of that game is most likely going to be on the road to Capitol mm -hmm. next week. Should they survive that? They're on the road to, you would think, if everything plays out according right. to plan, on the road to Martinsburg. Sure. Should they survive that, then, you know, we're off to the Super 6 in Wheeling, and, you know, you're going to get a, a Huntington, a Wheeling Park, a South Charleston come out of that top bracket. So, you know, it, whoever comes out of this, this game, if they're to go all the way, they're, they're going to earn it. And, and it seems like that, because if you go by the sports writers poll, if Morgantown University did that, you're talking about them probably beating three of, of what the sports writers consider uh, top eight teams in the state. So no uh, uh, it'll be interesting to see how that one plays out. And so it seems like you're you're projecting that probably whoever does come out of Saturday night's game will have to travel to Capital when you look at just the the next step of the phase, Capital, Hurricane, that it's I probably going to be Capital. Yeah, I, I would say that's a that's a fairly safe assumption. I mean, you know, no slight on Hurricane. Mm -hmm. They, you know, they're a playoff team, but you know, that, that capital team looks pretty strong coming in at number three. All right, very good. Chris, appreciate your time, and please continue to check vdpost.com for all the latest on our area high school football teams. Thanks for watching today.